Hi, everybody. It's still April 28, 2019. I am going to be reading quotes of uh, scientists who are disputing this global warming, climate change business. I had these on my channel for the longest time. And it, this was based on a video that I did years ago on Kafka Winston World back in the days when I lived in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Uh, and all of the quotes are um, embedded in pictures that I have taken in Great Barrington, which I hope that you take a look at the sky uh, that are part of these quotes. But it isn't it interesting? We're, we're living such an incredibly... Um, Oh, wow. Incomprehensible time when we can't get through to people. Uh, you know, I, I found myself, I, the reason why I named my first channel Kafka Winston World, well, I didn't know anything about social media. I thought I could change the name and then, okay, you can't change your name. Uh, but I read a biography of Franz Kafka and uh, why was I reading? Because life became so Kafka-esque and it was Kafka Winston World, the name of my channel. Winston was the main character in 1984, George Orwell's 1984. And I began to feel as if I was Winston in Great Barrington by trying to just have conversation about what was taking place and the responses that I were that I was getting was so they were so surreal so bizarre so uh, I didn't know what to make of what I was living I'm not kidding and Great Barrington Massachusetts well it's filled with an awful lot of affluent comfortable spiritual types yeah very spiritual. They're on the road of uh, let me seek more comfort uh, and don't ever say anything to me that makes me feel uncomfortable and I don't really want to know the truth but I just want to be living a life of delusion. Believing I'm spiritual and ignoring how incredibly self-centered <laughs> I am. Yeah, that's that's a great spiritual road that you're on. But these were the people who were the quote-unquote educated elite, the liberal progressive Democrats who you would think, you know, some of my former friends were um, retired professors. They were involved in their livelihoods based on education. Um, and professional professionals, they didn't think. They had ceased thinking. They were too smart anyway. So don't, don't bring me information that I already know. I know the truth, Carol. Climate change, global warming is real. Okay, so what's happening in the sky? Oh, that's just pollution. Really? It was so... I, I mean, I had people say to me, well, a fact to you, Carol, may not be a fact to someone else. And no joke, they were literally redefining words for themselves. What works for them was fine. It was, it was getting to the point where it was impossible to hold conversation because they were redefining for themselves words. And I would, I literally said to one retired professor when we were having a discussion on atheism and she kept using her own definition of atheism and I kept saying, you know, Margo, you're using, I don't know how to have a conversation if you're going to be using your own definitions of words. And then another uh, person who was not really engaged in the conversation, but she yelled at me, what, 
Do you want to use your definition? And I, <laughs> these are educated people, and I said, no, I want to use the definition. You know, like the definition in the dictionary. There's a reason why we have definitions, um, you know, standard definitions so that our communication doesn't break down. So it's breaking down. Don't you see it breaking down? It, it, but that retired professor actually looked at me with a smug smile on her face like, oh, see, Tori is, is supporting me. Supporting you in what? Idiocy. Okay, great. It was a really strange, very strange time. But, you know, this picture, this was in Kentucky. This is the only, uh, these are the only pictures that are not in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Kentucky, 2013, I think. Yeah. And uh, is this pollution, what we are seeing, come from this cloud? Well, I think it's black carbon dust that they use to modify the weather. But do you see this little thing that is, it shot out from this black cloud and I watched this thing literally just go right across into this black cloud and see how it moves? <laughs> it was really pretty bizarre. Okay, well, you know what? Um, before I begin reading my quotes, this is abject craziness that we are living, guys. We are living a crazy time with crazy people. The Guardian demands a general strike to force climate action. Yeah, the 27th of September. They're calling for everyone to stop working. You know, well, because climate change is hurling humanity towards disaster, there is no more room to question the science when nearly every climate scientist is in agreement that the implications of a global rise in average temperature will spell drastic changes for human civilization. Stop working. We've got to get on this because there's no more room to question the science. And every climate scientist is in agreement when when most scientists are actually disagreeing. A few, a few scientists agree. They agree on fraudulent studies and data. And when you show people that, no, look at all of the scientists who dispute this global warming hysteria. They won't take it in. They don't take it in. It's, it's, yeah, I have a woman here in South Carolina who says, the TV told me. Well, the educated elite, the TV told them. It, no difference. There's no difference. In fact, I have found that my former friends were far less intelligent than those that I met uh, on my journey after 2012, driving through the country. Um, those that did not have their degrees on the wall. I mean, high school graduates were far more intelligent because their minds were not closed with the arrogance of, I'm smart, everybody else is stupid, and the information that I have is right, and therefore I don't even have to entertain what you say because I already know. I already know all of the answers. A closed mind is not a mind that works anymore. It's closed, done, shuttered. Closed minds. They, th these are people that have, they're just not intelligent. They're actually really stupid. Really stupid. 
What else do we have? We've got climate activists glue themselves to radical green British labor leaders private home. Glue? Please tell me that this is not true. Can't be true. Climate change protesters glued themselves to Jeremy Corbyn's home today as they continue to cause chaos around London's transport network. Network. This is Guardian. The Guardian. They were all Jeremy Corbyn supporters. Mr. Corbyn refused to speak to the protesters and his wife Laura Alvarez was sent outside to return gifts of Easter eggs and flowers that had been given to Corbyn by the activists earlier. The protesters later said they felt guilty about their actions and 55-year-old Trace uh, Williams added the group felt terrible about upsetting Miss Alvarez. They're gluing themselves to buildings with super glue. Could it, how could this be real? What rational explanation is there for Greens to glue themselves to the private home of their main champion in the British Parliament after giving him and his wife Easter gifts? Echo activists have been using gallons of super glue to attach themselves to every conceivable surface. And you know, it, what motivates them? A lie. It's a lie. So, all of these climate activists are being made such utter fools of. Yeah, hot dog ban. Okay, there's not a hot dog ban in New York City. I've seen people posting on this. Um, but, okay, listen to this. Mayor Bill de Blasio, comrade communist Bill de Blasio, approved an ambitious $14 billion Green New Deal on Monday, April 22nd, to combat climate change. The plan will cut purchases of red meat by 50% in its city-controlled facilities such as hospital schools and correctional facilities. Uh, that includes hot dogs, but there's not a ban on hot dogs in New York City. By 2030, New York City's Green New Deal will reduce greenhouse emissions by 30% while also creating new jobs. Yay! New jobs! Additionally, all buildings that are 25,000 square feet or more, of which there are 50,000 citywide, will be required to make efficiency upgrades that lower their energy usage and emissions or they will face steep penalties and guess what that's agenda 2030 so New York City they're gonna start with those buildings that are 25,000 square feet or more but it's all coming right to you yeah the private homeowner you will be forced to upgrade your home your appliances and Eventually, inspectors will be coming into your home. You will not be able to say, no, I don't want you in my home, because you will be fined every day until you allow those inspectors into your home. Or you may be arrested. This is Agenda 2030, the United Nations plan, which is being implemented all over the world to reshape the world to control every aspect of your life, every aspect of life on the planet. And they're using this lie of climate change to implement Agenda 2030 because we've got to do something. Because, uh oh, what was it? Um, or Casio Cortez? <gasps> we only have 12 years. We'll be extinct in 12 years if we don't act on this now. But this is the one New York City 2050. Ah, oh, okay. They're maybe giving themselves another 20 years. Um, New York City's Green New Deal. We will be strong and fair city. We will be a strong and fair city with bold actions to confront our climate crisis achieve equity and strengthen our democracy. We are building a strong and fair city. Join us. And you look at these and 
I clicked on Healthy Lives. Let's see what Healthy Lives brings us. Oh my God, it was really, I'm not going to go into reading all of these things, but um, read the story. Let's read the story. What a website, huh? All New Yorkers have the right to health care. New York City is addressing the health and mental health needs of all communities. We will reduce differences in health outcomes. Good health is the foundation of a fair and equitable society. Our commitment, our commitment to a healthy life. Want to help? Here's what you can do. Oh my God. Now, uh, let me get to, hang on. Well, before I get to what I really want to show you is this here. My administration is committed to advancing our work to build a fairer and more progressive city. New Yorkers, get it. You got a communist? Progressive city means communism. And who's going to be paying for this one new, uh, one, one NYC? You. Why did he put a picture of a young Bill de Blasio in this download. Don't you think it's interesting? Don't you think it's deceptive? Bill, why don't you take a current picture of yourself and stick it in there? All right, you know, Healthy Lives, volume five of nine. This is the 14th billion dollar plan New Yorkers your healthy lives yes reduce inequities and in health outcomes by addressing you know what oh my god look at this and I thought hmm that looks a little bit like agenda 2030 but here empower all New Yorkers to participate in our democracy New Yorkers uh, we've got a constitutional republic get off the democracy thing Welcome new New Yorkers from around the world and involve them fully in civic life. Promote justice and equal rights. Promote democracy and civic innovation on the global stage. Well, look into Agenda 2030. Do the research. You'll find out. Uh, this is probably not a good idea. Healthy lives guarantee high quality, affordable, and accessible health care for all New Yorkers. I'll link below to everything. You can read it and read it and read it. But you know what? I was just going flipping through this PDA. Ah, oh, what? Wow. What? What do we have here? Sustainable Development Goals. The Sustainable Development Goals are the global blueprint adopted by all countries at the United Nations to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all and here it is right smack in Bill de Blasio's download for a better New York and you know what's crazy when we try to talk about Agenda 2030 what do we get? Oh God you're a conspiracy theorist you tell them to go to the United Nations. It's right smack on the United Nations website, and they won't do it. Uh, it's right here in this um, PDF. Build Blasio. Yep, we're going to be we're going to be building a better New York. Here, one NYC 2050 aligns with these sustainable development goals. But we're crazy, right? We're crazy. And they're bringing this about by their outrageous lie about climate change, global warming. And then you show them all the evidence that it, in fact, is a lie. Well, what do you get? You get people who are brain dead. And that is our biggest problem. The people who are brain dead. And that goes for every group of whatever Americans want to put themselves in. Sorry. 
um, stick themselves in, uh, you know, Republicans, Democrats, Christians, Jews, Muslims, white, black. If you're brain dead, you are a danger to everybody. Because we have a takeover of our country. We've had this takeover going on for a long time. They have been implementing these agendas incrementally. Part of their agenda is to make you brain dead by taking over the food supply and not allowing you now to purchase food that will um, be good for your brain. Uh, the frequencies, you know, you sit and you stare at your smartphones and you sit in your Wi-Fi homes with the smart meter blasting and the cell tower in your communities blasting these frequencies that are affecting your brain. Um, and then, of course, we have a whole uh, number of people who are awake who are also just, oh, well, I don't care. And there's nothing we can do anyway, so why bother to do anything? Yeah, well, is it a wonder? Is it really a wonder that we are living this nightmare? But when you see now the obvious just people don't care to see it, don't want to see it, get hostile if you try to point it out, yada yada. Unbelievable what we are living. It's just, you know, wow. Okay, sustainable living now includes edible pets to curb global warming. I'm reading these articles. I'm thinking, I'm not living this. I can't be living this. I am living this. Echo paw print of a pet dog is twice that of a, a 4.6 liter land cruiser driven 10,000 kilometers a year. Victoria University professors Brenda and Robert Val, architects who spe specialize in sustainable living, say pet owners should swap cats and dogs for creatures they can eat, such as chickens and, or rabbits. And they, are, they have a provocative new book, Time to Eat the Dog, The Real Guide to Sustainable Living. Uh, guys, look. There's only so much I can research. If you want to research this, and if it's satire, then I will I will absolutely post a video. But you know, um, okay. Well, the couple have assessed the carbon emissions created by popular pets, taking into account the ingredients of pet food and the land needed to create them. Uh, if you have a German Shepherd or a similar sized dog, for example, its impact every year is exactly the same as driving a large car around. <gasps> a lot of people worry about having SUVs, but they don't worry about having Alations and what uh, German Shepherds. And what we are saying is, well, maybe you should be worried about your pets because the environmental impact, it's comparable. Okay, a medium sized dog is uh, apparently comparable to uh, a Volkswagen. Oh no, wait, no, that's even a smaller dog. A smaller dog or a cat. Oh my God, a cat. Okay, Echo Footprint. It's slightly less than a Volkswagen Golf. Golf, whatever, the car. Uh, hamsters, yeah, two hamsters, they're equivalent to owning a plasma TV couple who did not um, who do not have a cat or dog believe the reintroduction of non carnivorous pets into urban areas would help slow down global warming you know don't you feel like sometimes like you know okay it's time to shoot myself um, I, it, and then we have these groups, <clears throat> teenagers, who we are. You go on, you do some research. They are using children. They are exploiting children to um, continue on with this lie. Children. Yes, Zero Hour Movement started with uh, our founder, 16-year-old Jamie Margolin, frustrated by the inaction of elected officials and the fact that youth voices were almost always ignored in the conversation around climate change and the profound impact 
that it would have on young people. Everybody is marching in tune with a lie. With a lie. Now, you know damn well adults are funding this and are behind it. You know, if you want to read about these Green New Deals that apparently now, well, New York has implemented, okay, uh, then you, you need to you need to find out about this Ocasio-Cortez, who I said, my first video about this woman, months and months ago, I said, she is, she has been selected to be the uh, Agenda 2030 poster girl. And, you know, okay, please start thinking, Americans. Look, look at this obvious. Now, you have a bartender, Ocasio-Cortez, and suddenly she is like one of the most powerful congresswomen in uh, in the United States government. Does that seem a little bizarre to you? She was a bartender, okay? How did this happen overnight? It does not happen overnight without people behind the curtain pulling the strings. Ocasio-Cortez is just giving a script. She's given a script and she speaks it. And those behind Ocasio-Cortez have been the ones who have been getting these democratic socialists into office. <sighs> Americans, yeah, it's like they don't care about the Constitution. They don't care that you know, it was not capitalism that brought down our country or, you know, revealed the evil, the evil. It was greed. It was corruption. It was government mer merging with corporations. It was not capitalism. Capitalism actually uh, spurred the greatest um, middle class, not great in psyche or any of that, but the biggest middle class in any country ever, ever, in the history of the world, never before has a middle class been so strong in any other country. How did we get there? It was capitalism that brought that on. Now they want to destroy it because they're bringing in communism. <sighs> Man. The world is going to end in, tw in 12 years if we do not address climate change. Yes. Alexandria or Cassio Cortez, do you think when she was bartending she, she cared at all about anything? Oh boy, did they get this woman up to speed. Well, what is she doing? She's going into public school systems, higher education, and the media to indoctrinate the American public on the supposed environmental doomsday looming just around the corner. How do you, how could you possibly see as a sane, moral, adult when they are like you know scaring the crap out of kids where the hell is that who yeah we only have 12 years that's based on the IPC uh, intergovernmental panel for climate change the United Nations those few scientists using fraudulent data to fool the world and they get children on a lie. What have we become? A sick nation. Well, uh, you can read. <laughs> yeah. Do you think she came up with the Green New Deal? She has nothing to do with it. Uh, it was plagiarized from 2009, a United Nations Environmental Program report, which I believe in 2009, that report was based on a 2008 Green New Deal that came out of uh, the came out of England 2008 44 page report by the Green New Deal group a Green New Deal group in 2008 all of these echo crazy climate change global warming nut jobs who based on a lie uh, want to change the world 
for the United Nations, people making a whole lot of money. Very interesting article here. Yeah, 2009, United Nations document titled Rethinking the Economic Recovery, a Global Green New Deal. It is discovered that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is just another slime bag. Doesn't care. Moral character, vacant. Not in this woman, no moral core. I'll lie and I'll get an awful lot of money while I, you know, go on and... Oh, we need fairness in our country. Hey, how about a universal basic income? Well, I'm going to get paid a shitload. And I'm going to be like the Obamas who come into office with only like a million dollars. And now they're billionaires. Yay! In eight years. Woo! That's all I'm going to have to do. These disgusting, despicable, immoral creatures all over. Well, you can read a lot about where that Green New Deal comes from, John Podesta. John Podesta. Oh, God, we are. We've had so many people uh, that have fooled us, that have um, been working, you know, agendas uh, for their own self-interest. Yeah, pad my pocket, I'll vote for you. Trilateral, trilateral commission. Big time behind the the Agenda 2030 Green New Deal that you now have implemented in New York City and you're going to be paying through the nose. So all links are below to the articles if you want to read them but man I gotta read these quotes here and then as I am these are climatologists scientists, physicists, smart people who've looked into that mm, climate change thing. Oh, uh, some sat on the IPCC authored uh, or edited assessment reports, uh, very involved in this climate change global warming business. Business, billions of dollars of grant money are flowing into the pockets of those on the man-made global warming bandwagon. No global warming, the money dries up. This is big money, make no mistake about it. Always follow the money trail and it tells a story. James Spann, American Meteorological Society, a certified meteorologist. They're still pushing that. They're still pushing. Most scientists agree the science is done. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. You're never going to hear from any of these people on mainstream media. This from Mark Campbell, professor of chemistry at the U.S. Naval Academy. Consensus in science is an oxymoron. From Galileo to Einstein, one scientist with proof is more convincing than thousands of other scientists who believe something to be true and I don't even grant there is a consensus among scientists it's just that the press always promotes the global warming alarmists and ignores or minimizes those of us who are skeptical you're right on Mark carbon dioxide is not the boogeyman the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere is currently 380 parts per million if it were up to 560 parts per million, the temperature would only rise about 0 0.03 degrees. Ian McQueen, chemical engineer. All of these pictures, by the way, uh, were taken in 2011, Great Barrington, Massachusetts. We were bombarded, bombarded in 2011 with very strange happenings in the sky. I would point them out and people would just look at me. Some would get hostile immediately. Oh my God, oh my God, what are you doing? I'm comfortable, I don't like serious 
Continue. Somebody told me to stop thinking. Yeah, stop thinking. Hmm. How do you do that? I don't know. Um, I would point out that that's to so many people. I was sending them articles and pictures and videos and trying to get through to them about this climate change business. And one person, oh God, I was actually really happy to have met her in the dentist office when I had an abscess and could hardly talk, but I was reading a Carl Jung book and and she started talking to me and, and we, you know, embarked on uh, the road to a possible friendship. She was rather awake, you know, certainly to genetically modified organisms. She was the founder of the co-op, one of the founders of a great store in Great Barrington co-op where you could actually get organic, local organic food. Oh, God, do I miss it. Uh, but um, when I pointed out the sky, I said, do you see all that black stuff in our sky? Oh, yes, that's pollution. We're in a valley, so it gets stuck here. But where the hell are the manufacturers that are producing the pollution? That always stumped everybody. But no, it wasn't pollution. They were spraying black carbon dust, and that's why uh, people were work walking around in shorts during the winter in Massachusetts. T-shirts and shorts. Yeah. Climate change. What the hell's going on? Very hot in the winter up north. Um, so, you know, I, I tried to approach very carefully the subject of, mm, well, maybe climate change might not be really true. Gave her some, uh, emailed her some articles and she never read them, called me and sounded angry. I was like, and I said, yeah, what is, what, what's going on? I'm not going to read these articles. And you've just lost most of your credibility. Our, our relationship was, we didn't even get to the friendship part. It was done. Would not read anything that I sent her. And my credibility was shot because I didn't go along with her thinking, her belief her belief, oh my God, I don't believe what you believe. Well, then you should be assassinated. You should be eliminated from the planet. Um, the global warming scaremongering has its justifications in the fact that it is something that generates funds. Eduardo, Eduardo Tony, Committee for Scientific Research, Research Argentina paleontologist. Yeah, global warmers predict that global warming is coming and our emissions are to blame. They do that to keep us worried about our role in the whole thing. If we aren't worried and guilty, we might not pay their salaries. It's that simple. Gary Nullis, Nobel Prize winner for chemistry. I am a skeptic. Global warming has become a new religion. Um, Iver Gaber, oh, sorry if I've mispronounced your name. He also said it's pseudoscience coming out of the IPCC, creating an ideology pegged on carbon dioxide is a dangerous nonsense. The present alarm on climate change is an instrument of social control, a pretext for major businesses and political battles. Delgado Dominguez, environmental scientist. You like all of the chemtrailing? I had the privilege of being fired by Al Gore since I didn't go along with his alarmism. I have spent a long research career studying physics that is closely related to the greenhouse effect. Fears about man-made global warming are unwarranted and are not based on good science. Will Happer, Princeton University, um, former director of energy research, uh, 
energy research. Well, he's renowned. <laughs> he's a smart guy uh, and a professor. My eyesight is really going, guys. Dennis Holler is astrophysicist. What I do with the IPCC report is put it in the trash can because that's all it's worth. Warming fears are the worst scientific scandal in the history of science. When people come to know what the truth is, they will feel deceived by science and scientists. Kim Minori, I Tao, member of IPCC process, award-winning environmental physical chemist. Chemist. My God, we are screaming to the younger generation. We only have 12 years. If we don't do something now, well, the planet's going to blow up and there will be no more human beings. How despicable are these adults saying that? It is easier to silence scientific dissent by utilizing the politics of personal destruction than to actually debate them on the merits of their arguments. That should tell you something about the global warming debate. There is none right now. It's either you believe or you are discredited. Mike Thompson, chief meteorologist, Kansas City News Station, former U.S. Navy meteorologist. I personally cannot in good faith continue to contribute to a process, IPCC process, that I view as both being motivated by preconceived agendas and being scientifically unsound. Lewis Hissink, field geologist, editor of the Australian Institute of Geoscientists. It's become a fad, and the scientists are going along with the fad to get research grants and media limelight. The facts, such as we can observe and calculate them, do not support the idea of man-made global warming. William Hunt, research scientist at NOAA. The public has been repeatedly misled that there is a scientific consensus on global warming. Totally false. Unfortunately, man-made climate change or anthropogenic global warming as it's more commonly known, has become a political issue rather than a scientific one. Glenn Speck, chemist, um, Isotech Environmental Lab. 35 years testing air, water, fuel, and soil for chemicals. The secret, the secret second stage of horror beaming much more energy into the ionosphere could produce a severe disruption of the upper atmosphere at one location that may produce effects that spread rapidly around the earth for years. Richard Williams, physicist and consultant with David Sarnoff Laboratories in Princeton. Being a scientist means being a skeptic, Garrett van der Lingen, scientist. Skepticism, the mark and even the pose of the educated mind. John Dewey. The IPCC's conclusions are not justified as a result of publicly challenging the IPCC's consensus. I have been called a climate denier, a climate disinformer, anti-science. There is enormous pressure to conform to the so-called consensus. Scientists who demonize their opponents are antithetical to the scientific process. Owing to these pressures and these gutter tactics of the academic debate on climate change, I recently resigned my tenure faculty position at Georgia Tech, Dr. Judith Curry. She was vilified. These are the clouds, right smack. I'd walk out. It was like every single day I would be seeing something so surreal. Point it out to people. Nothing. Point out, hey, what's that pink? What's that green? What's that you? Nothing. Implausible conjecture backed by false evidence and repeated incessantly. 
aimed at the overturn of the industrial civilization, warned that the United Nations lies and scientists' willingness to keep quiet about them was likely to seriously reduce public trust in and support for science. Dr. Richard Lindzen, MIT meteorology professor. On the IPCC assessment report, there's absolutely no true, useful, or original content in this stuff. All this fear-mongering is just a random mutation of nonsense that everyone has seen many times with some completely irrelevant and random new noise. Climate fear-mongers, you've become some of the most dishonest as well as useless people in the Earth's history. Dr. Lebos, um, sorry that I cannot even see your name. Physicist, Harvard University. See, this was years and years ago. I did this video with these clips and, well, now I can't see. There is no rapid sea level rise going on today and there will not be. On the contrary, if anything happens, the sea level will go down. This is so unscientific. That is a terrible thing because one day it will all be revealed as nonsense and then we lose our trustworthiness. That from Dr. Nils Axel Morner, retired head of Paleogeophysics uh, and Geodynamics, Stockholm University, and a former IPCC editor. On the IPCC's latest report that is being used to justify the claim we only have 12 years left, careless, amateur, about the standard of a first-year university student. Data incorrectly adjusted in a way that exaggerates warning. Dr. John McLean, Australian climate researcher. You know, what's interesting, though, is we can't get through to people. Look at all the microwaves, black carbon cloud, all of what people were not seeing in other parts of the country. Because I was already posting on YouTube. And I was saying, okay, our clouds, they're not real. They're artificial. And people would say, come on, we understand about the chemtrails, but I think you're taking it a step too far. No, there was so much going on right smack in this area in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. We had cloud coverage over and over, and people would just say, well, this is New England, really. Really? Okay, well... <laughs> really? No joke. Our sky. On IPCC latest report, a political message, not a scientific one. Staggering concoction of confusion, speculation, and sheer ignorance. Dr. Benny um, Peisner, Global Warming Policy Foundation. We need to put down the IPCC as soon as possible, not to protect the patient who seems to be thriving in its own little um, cocoon, but for the sake of the rest of us whom it is trying to infect with its disease. Fortunately, most of the population seems to be immune, but some governments seem highly susceptible to this disease. That was Dr. Judith Curry, and I didn't read her credentials climatologist, professor at Georgia Tech. She was the chair of the climate science um, division. Look at all of these different colors. Look at how magnificently you can see the microwaves. And is this the ionization of our clouds? Wow. The ripple effect of the microwaves. So, Global Warming Petition Project, 31,457 American scientists signed this. There is no convincing evidence that human release of carbon dioxide, methane, or other greenhouse gases is causing or will, in the foreseeable future, cause 
catastrophic heating of the Earth's atmosphere and disruption of the Earth's climate. Moreover, there is a substantial evidence, there is substantial evidence that increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide produce many beneficial effects upon the natural planet and animal environments of the Earth. We need more CO2, not less. It's true, we are living this time. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The lies just continue to persist because Americans yeah, most of them, they're so stuck on the lie. And why? Because it suits them. It works for them. No moral core. It's gone, guys. There is no morality here in our country. It's gone. What does that mean? It means the people don't have that. The people manifest the reality. And when you have a people who don't care about anything except their own little life, governments can do so much to destroy them. Calling for the UN report to be torn up and tossed out along with the entire IPCC process, which produced such a misleading and potentially dangerous document, an embarrassment of internal inconsistency, beyond misleading, entirely self-serving. That comes from Patrick Michaels and Paul Chip um, Knappenberger, Kappenberger, Climate Experts Center for the Study of Science at the Cato Institute. You like this guy? And people, I would send pictures of this guy looking, you know, like what you have seen. And these pictures, wow. Oh my God, Carol, thank you so much for sending these beautiful sunsets. We are so fortunate to be living in the Berkshires. Okie dokie. Americans have been gone for a long time. On the National Climate Assessment, never seen such blatantly absurd conclusions drawn entirely from a mathematical from mathematical models that use only a limited number of variables the purpose of the report was to produce a preordained political outcome that puts more power and money in the hands of the united nations there is no evidence that further increases in carbon dioxide emissions will have any deleterious effects on the planet or its temperature this report is a scientific embarrassment. Dr. Jay Lair, hydrolysis, science director, Heartland Institute. Do you dispute the claims that increase that an increase of CO2 CO2 in Earth's atmosphere are raising global temperatures? Do you dispute the idea that emissions of CO2 from human activities are a significant cause of global warming? My answer to both questions is yes. Dr. Fred Singer, renowned scientist around the world, credentials up the wazoo to speak on this subject. Dr. Fred Singer, physicist, professor emeritus, environmental science, University of Virginia, known as the father of climate change skepticism. Yes, I dispute those claims. Such cl This is what he said in this interview. Such closed-mindedness exists among scientists who have made a major career investment, among politicians who have made major prestige, pre um, prestige commitments, and of course among many industries and groups that stand to benefit financially from the lavish subsidies provided by governments. Climate Gate, you know, the email scandal years ago, ClimateGate demonstrates the hubris of a small group of climate scientists, mainly British and, New and United States, who have managed to control the production of data sets of sur uh, surface temperatures. In addition to the manipulation of the data, we have learned that the same group engaged in unethical behavior by withholding their data analysis 
procedures from scrutiny by destroying culpatory evidence such as emails, by keeping dissenters from publishing contrary opinions in scientific journals, by manipulating the, the process, the refereeing process, and bullying journal editors. These matters are very unpleasant and reflect on science generally. They also implicate the editors of certain prestigious journals who have played along with these guys. Yeah, consensus. You want to believe the horseshit, Americans? Go ahead. But what does that make of your life? What does that make of who you are? There is no such thing as man-made climate change. The public doesn't know the difference between fake science and evidence-based science. The carbon dioxide claim, they use it to brainwash people into doing all sorts of stuff. Piers Corbin, astrophysicist, weather forecaster. Some more pictures of the beautiful skies in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Bizarre clouds, man. Unbelievably bizarre. <laughs> Don't you think? So, I, 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 I'm going to be posting a couple of videos uh, just because I've done the research and I got to, you know. But I, I can't do this anymore. This is insane. It's insane. If the United States closed everything, ceased to exist, no cars, no people, no industry, no utilities, in 50 years, the change in temperature might be a few hundredths of a degree. John Christie, Alabama State climatologist, lead author of the United Nations IPCC. And in 2017, someone shot up what they thought was his office. Seven bullets smashing windows, going into walls in an office that was right next door to John Christie. John Christie's office. Yeah, it's been a hard time, guys, you know, for all of us trying to get it, you know, through to people. Um, just think of how much damage has already occurred, you know, to the health of the planet, the health of life on the planet, we included, four-legged included, you think about how far along the Agenda 2030 implementation is going. Um, it has already um, they've, uh, they've achieved a great amount of success. Even if you wake up a little bit, let's say somebody watches this video, listens to the quotes and goes, wow, there are a lot of scientists who are disputing what what I've been hearing is consensus. The science is done. It's in. Now we got to do something. If one person does that, then they have to do all the work to get on board with all of the agendas to understand the big picture of what is taking place. That takes years and years and years. So yeah, they got us. Now, does that mean that I'm saying stop? Don't try to wake people up? No, of course not. Oh, by the way, my first cop to Winston World Channel, I posted a lot of <laughs> videos to Amy Goodman. I felt so incredibly betrayed because I donated to Democracy Now! and I really respected her and I had that liberal progressive, you know, oh, Amy Goodman, she's an angel. She's, uh, you know, uh, her veracity should unquestionable. You don't question Amy Goodman you know, stamped on her forehead is integrity. She is the quintessential disinformation agent, reports a lot of truth, and boy does she... She will not interview any of these scientists, that's for sure. She's on board. She's another poster girl for the United Nations, the IPCC Agenda 2030. So yeah, you know, after decades, I'd walked around with that Democracy Now! burlap book bag, and oh boy, I look back and I think, Jesus, yeah, well, 
you know, we were all made a fool of. That's what liars do. They make fools of you. But I posted so many videos hitting back hard on Amy Goodman. 2011, my God. 2011, all of the tornadoes, Joplin, Missouri, the flooding, the flooding of like a million prime farmland, Missouri. So much was happening weather-wise, and all I kept hearing was Amy Goodman, Democracy Now. There she is interviewing Bill McGibbon of 350.org, who's funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. Um, it hurt. Betrayal hurts. When you betray people, it hurts. There's an alarmist bias in global warming research, corrupted scientific research. You don't get money to study non-problems. So the scientific community wants to have problems to study, which means you convince Congress to give you money. It's an unholy alliance between science and government, Dr. Roy Spencer, climatologist. Yes. Great Barrington where the smart, affluent people live. Global warming is one of those cool things, but there isn't a shred of evidence. The guys who are running this, the Hathaway Center IPCC, they're computer jobs. They don't really know much about climatology. Climatology is a joke. Gary Nullis, Nobel laureate in chemistry. Global warming petition project was started by Beck Frederick Seitz. And that was what I had just showed the 31,457 scientists who signed that petition disputing global warming. In fact, we need more CO2. Frederick Seitz started that. President of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences and Rockefeller University, National Medal of Science, Compton Award, Franklin Medal, etc. A whole lot of medals held 32 honorary doctorates from 32 universities around the world, and none of these people are being interviewed by mainstream media. Look at this guy. I would sit by a river, literally watching a show take place in our sky. There was a Gwen Tower and a Cell Tower very close by and I would watch the creation of an extraordinary like happening in the sky and tried to get friends they ignored it they didn't care so last one the idea of producing a document the IPCC assessment report of near biblical infallibility is a misrepresentation of how science works and we need to look very carefully about what the IPCC does in the future. Miles Allen, professor, Oxford University, Climate Research Network, worked extensively with the IPCC. So, truth, this is what we have to live now. This is what we have to live. I, I will until the day I die, live shell-shocked. The condition of the American people, their refusal to even engage, you know, facts and evidence, who cares, my opinion is good enough, I heard it on mainstream media, the TV told me. The arrogance of these educated people who um, have no <laughs> real reason to be arrogant, frankly, because they're stupid. They're the stupidest people I have ever met. And that is true. Now, I am one of them, right? Oh, and I did have that arrogance. My arrogance, though, was not based on my really thinking I was smart. I have, you know, that um, stupid, it's cemented in me, it's hardwired. So my arrogance was uh, really trying to compensate for my believing I was stupid. But it was easy to give up. 
because it was just bullshit and but to face this and all of my friends who just They make you out to be crazy, mentally ill, you're a conspiracy theorist, they gossip about you, they... Well, I know that a lot of you relate to what I just said, and we're seeing an awful lot of really immature, despicable, immoral behavior. And the only thing, you know, I think the most important thing for all of us to be working on is our own selves um, and make sure that we don't lie and betray those in our own lives that we really work to make our relationships stronger and stronger because this world is going to become harder and harder to face and doing it alone you can't do it alone. It, it's just, it's not doable. You begin to sink and those alone will not be able to survive what is taking place. Many have already died. It's a, it's a trip, man. It's a trip to be living this. Anyway, I'll link below to all of the crazy climate change activist articles and, and the Green New Deal. Yeah. How do you stop this when you're facing so many people who just don't care? That's our biggest problem. People who do not care. <laughs>